To every afflicted individual, I present before you the tale of Yusuf so that it can nurse your wounds, so that it can give solace to your pain and your agony. Any person feeling distraught, feeling depressed, feeling miserable, feeling low, tell him to read or listen to the tale of Yusuf and instantly he will feel tranquil, calm and relaxed. So here we have this young boy, he has a dream, he has a vision. So he sees this dream as a little child. It's this 11 stars, it's this brilliant bright sun and it's this moon in a row together all bowing and prostrating before me. When Sayyidina Yaqub heard this, he was a man of prophethood, coming from a family of prophethood. Yaqub realized that a great future was in the making. So he took the necessary precautions. So he said, my son, I'm happy you told me I'm your dad. I wish the best for you. But don't say it for your brothers. I'm afraid they won't wish as I wish for you. Fate had it, Sayyidina Yusuf leaked it out and he couldn't contain it. So he tells his brothers, you know what, I had this dream. I seen this year the 11 stars, sun, moon, prostrating. Now, although they were not prophets, but they were in the house of prophethood. So obviously they had some degree of understanding as well. And they realized that there is something great happening. And they also sensed the father having an inclination. They said, by Allah, our dad loves Yusuf and his brother. Our dad is naive. Our dad is deviant. So when they were harboring jealousy, we will drop him in the well, and we know it's evil, but then we'll make tawbah thereafter. Anyway, they muster the courage and they come to the dad, who's going to put the bell around the cat? Dad, it's been long, Yusuf hasn't accompanied us. You just want to let him go, and tomorrow we will party, we will indulge. Yarta, we will eat. Yalab, he will play. Wa inna lahu lahafidun, we'll take good care of him. He didn't oppose the concept of going out and having quality time. He had reservations and apprehensions that he felt that he was a young boy who wasn't able to fend for himself. So anyway, Yaqub releases Ibn Kathir's narration when the brothers take Sayyidina Yusuf wassalam, after negotiating with the dad. But in the back of the mind, they've hatched this plan that they're going to drop him in the depth of this well. So as they leave the presence of Yaqub, they embrace the boy, they kiss him. No, no, let me hold him. No, let me hold him. So there's almost like a squabble to carry Yusuf salam, to give the notion of commitment and love. They barely slip out from the vision of the dead and here they start hurling the most nasty, condescending, vituperative comments. And Ibn Kathir says that the little boy in his feeble voice speaks out. But my brothers, this is not what you told our dad. But we just left him now. You were holding me, hugging me, embracing me. And the narration also says, Yaqub embraced his son. Can you imagine how emotional that embrace must have been? He had this thing bothering him within himself. There's something sinister. There's something malicious. So with an embrace, with love, with affection, he releases. No sooner are they out of the sight of the dad, they drop him down. This is jealousy. Allah said, as he slipped in the depth of the well, we informed him, inspired him, and comforted him. We said, just hang in Yusuf, just persevere. There will come a time where you will narrate the details of this event to these very brothers with absolute confidence, and they will not recognize who you are. Now they made up the tale, they dropped him there, but there's a lot of consequences. How do we face our dad? So what they did, they exploited the apprehension of their dad. And they said, listen, the best thing would be to say the very fears that he had, tragically, his fears became a reality. They decided to come by night. They wanted to take shelter in the cover of dark. They didn't have the courage to look their dad in his eyes. Why? Because there was guilt trickling down their cheeks. They come crying. Qurtubi writes, this is a categoric and explicit proof of the fact that every man who tears is not necessarily a victim. Now, you know, a crack in the voice, weakness in the body, you are feeling lethargic. Dad, you're not going to believe us. That's the first sign of a liar. How are you possibly going to hoodwink a Nabi of Allah? 
Our dad, you're not going to believe us. There was wolves roaming in the area. So dad, really, here is the shirt of our brother. So they come with the shirt of Yusuf stained with false blood. And they say, this is Yusuf salam's Yusuf's shirt. And really, apologies, my dad, that this is what had happened. Instantly, he looked at this and he said, Subhanallah, I would love to meet this wolf. What a neat job in staining my son's shirt. Almost like it opened up his shirt, took it out, stained it without any slit cut or any hole in any way. This was like a professional job. But this is the beauty of a Nabi. But when he realized it's over, and they have fabricated the deal. For me now onwards, I have to persevere in a manner that I don't moan or groan or question my Allah. He was bought by one of the main people in that, in Egypt at the time, one of the officials there. He took him to his house. This is where Yusuf grew up. So he was taken away from his loving father, from his parents, from his mother. At a young age, deprived of that love, deprived from that care, deprived from that parenthood and that homely atmosphere. And when he grew up, it gets worse when the wife of his master, and now she's his master, she can command him, she has authority and power over him. She closes the doors and the windows, and he refused out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, he proactively tried to get away from that situation. So he rushed to the door. He ran to the gate. And then they played it down. They tried to keep it low key. So no one hears about it. But then Yusuf alayhi salam was exposed to more fitna because the wife of Al-Aziz exposed him to more women who fell for his beauty. Because as the Prophet sallallahu said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave half of beauty to Yusuf alayhi salam. So women fell for his beauty. And that created so much rumors about Yusuf that he was after women. And he sought Allah's help to get out of this situation. And he said, oh Allah, even if it means I'm taken to prison, I would prefer, I'd go for that rather than just be in this kind of environment where there's a lot of seduction. So Allah answers his dua and he's taken unjustly to prison. He's convicted unjustly, put in prison. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when Yusuf alayhi salam entered into prison, there were two other young men who were entered into prison along with him. They come to Yusuf salam and they say, Look, we've heard that you're a special guy, that you can interpret dreams, that you're a very pious, righteous man. Well, one of them says, I saw a dream that I am basically squeezing, you know, extracting wine for the king. And the second one says, I'm seeing that I'm carrying a basket of bread on my head. But what's going on is that these birds are coming and eating from that basket of bread. So please tell us what these dreams mean because, you know, we obviously see for ourselves. We heard, but now we see for ourselves that you are an excellent, excellent person. You are from those who excel in doing good deeds, a righteous, pious man. So now Yusuf does something very interesting. They're asking for the interpretation of their dreams. Yusuf says, this is the ideal opportunity to have a very important conversation. What does he say? First of all, let me establish one thing. Before your next meal arrives, I will have told you the interpretation of your dreams. So meaning what? So I need you to stay with me. I need you to pay attention. You're asking me for something. I'd like to share something with you as well. How do I interpret dreams? I'm not some, like, I'm not some angel that I interpret dreams. Rather, this is something my Lord, my Master Allah taught me to do. He says, I have left the religion, the way of those people who don't believe in Allah, and they disbelieve very vehemently in the life of the hereafter. They reject belief in the life of the hereafter. But rather, what do I do? What's my path in life? He says, I follow the religion, the path of my forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yaqub. It was never an option for us to ever associate anything with Allah as a partner. This is from the huge blessing that Allah has showered upon us. But rather most people, they don't appreciate this fact that Allah has given us this information. Allah has taught us this. And then he says, Oh my two companions in prison. He said, what's better? Is it better to worship many, many different deities and gods and lords? Or is it better to worship Allah? who is one, alone, unique, and dominant and powerful. 
that the command, the power is only for Allah, is only in the hands of Allah. He has commanded that you worship no one other than Him, only Him you should worship. This is the proper way to live one's life, but most people, they don't understand. Now as Yusuf salam had promised, he says, Ya sahiba yisijin, as for one of you, you will go back to serving wine to the king. And as for the other, and birds will come and peck away at your, at your head. And that's exactly what ended up happening with the two people that asked the question to Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he saw the next prisoner leave, he said to him, Mention me to your master and tell him that I am imprisoned without any crime or wrong. The shaitan made the uh, prisoner forget what Yusuf salam, had asked him. Jibreel salam, came to Yusuf salam, in the prison and he said to him, Ya yeah, Yusuf, when your brothers threw you in the well, who is the one that saved you? He said, Allah. He said, when you were taken into slavery. Who is the one that chose good masters for you? He said, Allah. He said, when the women seduced you, who is the one that saved you from it? He said, Allah. He said, what prevented you from asking Allah now again? And so he remained in the prison for several more years. Then something extraordinary happened. The Pharaoh or the king saw a dream. Some say that this Pharaoh followed the religion of Yusuf but he was a good Pharaoh. The Pharaoh saw a dream. I saw seven fat cows in my dream and seven lean cows were devouring the fat cows. Likewise, I saw seven green ears of corn and seven withered ones. They were dry, no fruit in them, nothing. O oh, chiefs, explain to me my dream if you can interpret it. They said, the chiefs, these are just confused dreams. And we know nothing of the interpretation of such type of dreams. Now it is time to bring about the one who deserves to be there. And he is Yusuf alayhi salam. Then said the one who had been released. Remember the prisoner? Now he remembered Yusuf alayhi salam. I will inform you of its interpretation. So send me forth. He said, go. O oh, Yusuf, the truthful one, please interpret us the dream. So Yusuf gave him the interpretation. Listen to what he said. He said, for seven years you shall sow continuously. Meaning you'll have lots of crop. You will sow and you won't stop. You'll have abundance for seven years. Then what you reap of the harvest, leave it on the ear. Don't open it. Keep, the, keep them inside. Except a little whereof you eat. Don't open up anymore. And store the rest away, but within their mother stem. So they can be protected from parasites, worms, beetles, insects, preserved. Then after that, there shall come upon you seven hard years in which you shall devour all that you have reserved for them except a little you keep in store. You are going to need the amount of what you ate in the last seven years again. You will eat all of what you, what, what you reap in those next seven years and plus you will need more except the ones you've stored earlier. So keep them stored. Then there shall come after that a year in which the people have rain and in which they press wine. One year. When the king heard about that, he was taken to extraordinary shock. He said to him, go and get me him. When he went there, the prisoner, he said to him, the king wants you. Yusuf salam knew that this was good news, but there was something wrong. Yusuf salam is still accused of something which he didn't do. He refused to get out of the prison until he was proven innocent. So he said to him, he said, go back to your Lord, the king. Ask him concerning the women 
and question them. Your minister knows what I'm talking about. Meaning, get his wife after as well. And they will tell you the whole truth. When the king got this, he called them and he put them to trial. And they said, God forbid. We don't know any bad or guilt upon him. Yusuf is absolutely clean. So they brought the minister and he also told them the truth. The wife came along and she said, Now the truth has been made undoubtedly clear. I am the one who seduced him upon himself. He is among the truthful ones. Now Yusuf alayhi salam accepts to come out. Coming out with what? With honor, with respect. May Allah have mercy on Yusuf alayhi salam. And the king said to him, Today, O Yusuf, you have a firm, strong holding and establishment. You're with me today. What do you want? He asked for the job of the treasurer. Yusuf wasn't only the treasurer. Yusuf alayhi salam, he ruled everything. And this is how we gave power to Yusuf on land. Seven years will come past. Those seven years, Allah had blessed him with so much. And Yusuf alayhi salam, for seven years, he put a strategy that he kept enough stock for the next seven years. So people were comfortable in the first seven years. And then the next seven years came so tough. And the drought did not only come to Egypt, but even the countries surrounding Egypt. Everywhere else, the prices of food jumped. And in Egypt, the prices are still the same. No changes. And that drought hit Palestine. And who's living in Palestine? His family. And how long has it been? Decades. So they plan to go down from Palestine to Egypt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, when Yusuf alayhi salam is doing his job as a treasurer, monitoring everything, making sure everything's under control, unexpected, who comes? His brothers. So Yusuf alayhi salam recognized him. And they didn't know who he was. And Yusuf alayhi salam started to ask him questions. He asked them, how many brothers do you have? They said, well, 11 in to total. But at that time, there weren't 11. There was less than that. Binyamin, his brother from the same mother and father, was not with them. Yusuf alayhi salam gave each one of them what they deserve. But they said, we have other family members back home. Yusuf said, I will not give you until you tell me who they are. You bring them, I want to see them. Now they know. They know their father. And they know what they've done with Yusuf. So they said between each other, we could deceive our father in any way. And they will play a game on him. Now Benjamin is with them after making firm pledges and they entered from different gates. Yusuf saw his brother from the same mother and father and hugged him. And he said, oh, I am your brother. Remember me? And what did Yusuf alayhi salam do? After he prepared and he gave each one of his brothers enough stock that each one of them can have, he had a drinking cup. This drinking cup was made out of gold. He told one of his employees to hide that golden cup in the camel of his brother Benjamin. And then Yusuf alayhi salam started to investigate. Who is the thief among you here? And who was present? His brothers. And at the end, when he reached to his brother's camel, he found the stolen property. Benjamin! He is the one that stole this property. And what's his punishment? He's the slave. And he's got to stay behind with me. His brothers were shocked. So what did they say? Him? He had a brother like him who stole before. They're talking about him. And himself, Yusuf alayhi salam said, You are the ones who are in more evil. Allah knows what these people plotted. So when they went back to their father, the father became so passionate. I'll have the good patience. Maybe this time, Allah will bring me both of them back. And then he walked away from them. He was so upset and sad that he lost his sight. Can't you get over it? 
That's what they told him. Still gonna continue thinking of Yusuf until you're gonna collapse. I'm not complaining to you. I'm complaining to my Lord Allah. And then what did he say? Oh children, go back and search for Yusuf and his brother. Subhanallah, we just told you forget about Yusuf and now you are telling us to go and look for him. They came back humble. So what did Yusuf alayhi salam say? Do you remember what he did to Yusuf and his brother when you were ignorant? So what did they say? They were shocked. Is it you? That's Yusuf? I am Yusuf and this is my brother. They put their heads down and said, Verily, Allah had preferred you above us. So what did Yusuf alayhi salam do? I'm not even going to bring it up anymore. Forget it. Consider it's forgotten from today. He let them all free. He gave him his shirt. And he said, take that shirt back to my father. And you'll see my father. My father's sight will come back again. Allah says in the Quran Karim, from the moment they left Egypt, their father, he said, I could smell the smell of Yusuf. I don't want to say it, but then you start saying, I'm going crazy. When the brother Bashir came after eight days, so he gave the garment, he gave Yusuf's shirt or garment to the, his father. He said, didn't I tell you? I oh, know from Allah what you don't know. Now they have to surrender. So they said, you know, this person that we've been dealing with turned out to be Yusuf. So they said to their father, or that, ask Allah to forgive us. The wolf did not eat Yusuf, we threw him in the world. We were wrongdoers. He said, I'm gonna ask Allah to forgive you. He is the most merciful. Yusuf alayhi salam, he grabbed his parents, he hugged them, enter Egypt in peace. He put his mother and his father next to him on the throne. And what did all his brothers do? They all prostrated to Yusuf alayhi salam, including his mother and father. But it was a prostration of respect. So Yusuf alayhi salam said, Remember last time I met you, I told you about a dream that I saw. Eleven planets and the sun and the moon prostrating to me. Now this is the interpretation of the dream. Allah had made it come to reality. What's the eleven planets? His brothers. What's the sun and the moon? His father and mother. He went through a lot of hardships, but in the end, after patience and taqwa, he became a king. You are going to be victorious.